In this video, we're going to look at some examples for the present value of an ordinary annuity. Now, I want to mention that my math lab really has multiple different ways of asking the same question. So I don't want you to think when you're reading these questions, oh, there's all these different techniques that I need to use to solve these problems. Uh, for example, there's, there's really three different ways to ask the same type of question, uh, three different ways that my math lab uses anyway. Uh, one way is like this, find the present value of an ordinary annuity which has payments of $200 per month for five years at 4.1% compounded monthly. Okay, so you could think maybe you're setting up some retirement account or something. Now you're putting in $200 a month for five years uh, at a 4.1% interest rate compounded monthly. Uh, now that money is going to grow over time and you'll have some uh, amount in the future five years from now. But uh, really what this problem is interested in is what is the present value? Okay, what's the present value of that annuity? Okay, a second way uh, that you could ask the same question is find the amount necessary to fund the given withdrawals. Okay, monthly withdrawals of $200 for five years. Interest rate is 4.1% compounded monthly. Okay, now what, the way to think about this is uh, how much money would you need to put into some account, like some bank, bank account right now, so that at the end of each month for the next five years, you could withdraw $200. Okay, and now remember, your money in the bank account is gaining interest. Okay, so you can't just take your $200 and multiply it by 60, right? You make 60 payments uh, because uh, that's not taking into account the interest that, that the account is getting. Okay, and the third way you could ask the same question is find the lump sum deposited today that will yield the same total amount as payments of $200 at the end of each month for five years at an interest rate of 4.1% compounded monthly. Okay, these are three different ways of really asking the same question. Okay, so how do you answer this question? Well, here's the formula for present value. Now, I should uh, uh, remind you that the P stands for present value. The R is really the payments. Now, there are some questions on my math lab where it's asking you to find the payments. It's giving you the present value and asking you to find the R, find the, the, the payments. For example, on like a, a car loan, what are your payments going to be? Or a mortgage, what are your mortgage payments going to be, that's asking you to find R. So that's a little bit different than these three questions here. These three, they're giving you those payments, right? $200 at the end of each month, and they're asking you to find the present value. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, remember that R is 200, that I is 0.041, right? 4.1% interest, but you have to divide it by 12 because it's compounded monthly. Now, I type this into my calculator. In fact, let's try it. 0 0.0, oops, let's hit, uh, let's hit enter here. Um, let's see here. Okay, I, I type that into the calculator, 0 0.041 divided by 12, and I got 0 0.00341666667. Now, the problem is most likely going to ask you to round your answer to the nearest cent, okay, to the nearest really two decimal places. But notice, I don't want to round to the nearest cent just yet. I want to wait to the end to really do a lot of my rounding. Uh, if, in fact, if I rounded to the nearest uh, two decimal places right now, it'd just be 0 0.00, right? So I want to have enough decimal places so that my answer, um, you know, is, is not off at the very end. Okay, so it's uh, 0 0.00341. Let's just do... Uh, 666. Okay, so let's let's uh, have uh, that many decimal places. Okay, now when we type this into our calculator, we're, we're going to want to put 200 times, okay, the R was the 200, times 1 minus 1 plus I, now that will be 1.00341666, to the negative N, oh, what was N? N, it's not five, right? Uh, you're, you're making monthly payments for five years, so it's really 12 times five, right? You're making 60 payments, so the N is 60. So you have negative 60 up here. And then you're gonna divide by I, so that's just point uh, zero zero three four one six six six. Okay, now let's type this into our calculator. Okay, now when you do type it in, uh, let me mention something. We're going to have to put parentheses in here. Let's put a parenthesis here and a parenthesis all the way around here. These parentheses represent these brackets here. Now let's also put the numerator in parentheses, the whole top part in parentheses. Now the denominator we don't really need to put in parentheses because we're not adding or subtracting anything 
you can if you want to put parentheses around that, but you don't have to. And in the numerator, we'll put 1 plus 0 0.0034 for 1666 to the negative 60th power. Okay, so that's how you would type in the parentheses on your calculator. Now, I did this, and I uh, ended up with 10,677. Point one, I think it was eight five seven something or other. But if you round to the nearest penny, it's ten thousand six hundred seventy-seven dollars and nineteen cents. Okay, I'm not too sure if these decimals on the end here were, were correct, but rounding to the nearest penny, uh, this is what you get. That's the present value of that annuity, and you could really ask the question in any one of these three ways. Okay, in the next couple videos, though, uh, we're going to be talking about finding the payments. We're going to be given the present value, uh, and we're going to be asked to find the payments. Again, like car payments or mortgage payments. Um, but I, I want you to realize that these three questions here are really asking the same thing.